Man, I can't believe this thing came this quick. I ordered this when? Monday? Yeah, Monday. And it's uh, Thursday? This bad boy is here? This is insane. Alright, let's see what we got here. That's a nice sticker for a white car. I don't know what this piece is. I think it's a I think it's a transmission piece for the back of an AW71. I think it's the transmission mount bracket. Uh, I had another bracket kind of like it that I was using down here, but I noticed it was metal, so I don't think I should use that on a magnetic sensor. I think I should use aluminum. But the idea is to go to the bottom oil pan bolts, make two holes, one on each side, bolt at the oil pan bolts, and then put the sensor, um, you know, somewhere in here. But we're gonna have to do that for this and then make another leg to come off this hole. So we got a couple options here. Right now, I'm gonna cut this down, these two legs, so that I can figure out where I need to make my bolt holes to bolt it to the oil pan and then make the bracket from there for the trigger sensor. Welcome to Turbo World, where we repair things to go faster and last longer because a fix. Well, the fix is temporary. We're going to be working on this car, this 242. We're going to do the crank trigger. We're going to get it running. Won't you join us? Subscribe now. Like now. Let us know what you think about what we're doing. Do you like it? Do you not? I don't know. I won't know until you tell us. Okay. Well, I couldn't find anything else to use, so... We made some cuts like this on both sides, so now we can make some cuts like this so we can have a flat bar right here to drill some holes in. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut these guys out and show you what we come up with. Now, if you're new to this channel, you know that we've had a lot of setbacks. And by setbacks, I mean a lot of people trying to block our content, a lot of people trying to tell us what to do, and we're just not going to stand for that. So we moved to Rumble to hopefully have more freedom, but we're also taking a huge pay cut. But we didn't really have any pay in the first place anyway, because the Turbo World YouTube channel was all for my daughter and her education. So, are we really losing it? We got a touch of rain today, guys. Just a touch. What's funny is there's no divider between the hot tub and the rest of the pool. I think it's kind of funny. Hey, listen up. Here's my contraption. I mean, I almost rolled a dime. Like, maybe like five cents. I might have rolled a nickel. But yeah, that's the underside of it. So whatever, you know. It's gonna be looking up at people like this underneath the crank pulley, so people won't even see it. But yeah, that's just a little simple lock nut contraption. I think she'll like it. I think she'll find it tasty. So when I looked down at this bad boy, I could see that the teeth were going right here, but I could see where it needed to be read at. So what I wanted to show you about this is I can put this in a vise 
and I can squeeze that up a little bit and close that gap and make this pull in center. And so that's kind of why I put this little weird bend in there instead of just a straight off hook because I couldn't really get off that straight off hook angle. So that's the point. All right. And we just need a little bit, so we're not going to get too drastic with it, right? But this is when that vise really comes in solid. And so we'll bend this in, and then we'll have to bend this down. Bend this in, and then bend this down. So I'll go ahead and bend this down. Because we know we got to put a little angle on that. And that might get us closer. We'll probably have to do this a couple more times and jockey around with it. But it shouldn't be a problem to get it close. If you ever have a heater running in your garage or an AC, you know what the enjoyment factor is like when you add a camera to it all. It's amazing that these things start coming in on cue when you push the record button like nobody's business, like you never noticed before. It's insane. Anyway, check out this. I couldn't have made it work out any better. I mean, if I made it myself. Look at the reinforcement the stud gives. And so if we want to space this any further out, right now this isn't bolted up, so it actually comes in right, right here. So we actually pulled it in too far. So if we want to space it back out, we just add some washers up here if we wanted to. Or we can pull that gap back out right here just a wee bit to get it right where we need it. I think we'll be fine right there. We're going to go ahead and call that, and then we're going to line this right up here to 18, tooth number 18. That'll be 180, which is right here. So that'll be over here. And uh, we got it at top dead center, and then I think we'll spot weld it and then figure out what we're going to do from there. But yeah, I think that'll definitely work out for us. What a cool little added bonus there, isn't it? Like, you think this is going to be flimsy? No. Uh-uh. All right, let's look at it from up top again. Ew. I think I just beat myself a little bit. All right, look at it. Look at that. Amidst the jungle of wires still hanging down. Man, it's got a pretty good visual there, I think. Oh yeah, that's gonna get her. That's solid. Very, very solid. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. Alright. Now we gotta figure it all out. Wheel indexing was very confusing for me because I like to overthink things apparently. Basically what you have to remember is to put the engine on top dead center. And wherever you weld that wheel at on the crank, just make sure that it's an even amount of spaced teeth from the missing teeth. So from the missing teeth, I went nine teeth, and it measures at the nine teeth. Now it just so happens on the 36-1 wheel that it's 10 degrees per teeth because 360 degrees. So it makes it really easy to work with mathematically. So what I did is put it on the ninth teeth after putting the engine at top dead center and marking my ninth tooth indexing it with the crank pulley and then welding it accordingly so when it's at top dead center that sensor is pointing at the ninth tooth after the missing teeth now you can set it up here if I actually did the 18th teeth it would have been 180 degrees so that number would have been 180 but I actually changed my mind and did it this way it was very difficult to understand because some things I was reading about this were counting space in between the teeth and other things we're counting the actual teeth so right here each tooth is 10 degrees how many other tooth you index it off of you can even put it right at the missing teeth you know if you want really doesn't matter because you can put it all right here formulations right here but if you get it in the gap of the teeth you might cause some problems I don't know so I got it right on the tooth hitting the ninth tooth there it is pretty simple you can also find this at O'Reilly. It's just a regular tub of wheel grease.
Okay, yours might be different than mine, but what I did here is I used this caliper to measure the end. So I have a little measuring guide here, and I just went around and kept on poking it, you know, by putting the butt up against the teeth until there's no gap. And then just went around, and so the last one, the last round I did, I went all four. You know, and just keep going around. The car is almost in the way, but not quite. And just very carefully shake it. Now this isn't going to make it perfect but it made it a lot better than what I could eyeball. And so now I'm just gonna put a couple tacks on it, put it on the car and see if we can get it to run. All right, there's the ugly piece. There it is. Basically, I just spot welded up here uh, on the back a little bit, put some boogers on the back. And then I went to town on the front. Made sure it was all lined up and then went on the front, went into each one of these holes and got it done, you know. And I can pretty much see, you know, that I made it on there. So now it's time to see if this ugly thing will run this machine. so pretty so I timed it about 15 degrees so it should be somewhere around here so hopefully that's what we'll do all right go ahead and crank it baby oh wow it's right at zero okay cool right at zero
I probably could have had better luck with these belts. For example, these two are supposed to be the same, and the one on the outside obviously is not. And then this guy up here is so long for the power steering that it's in the intercooler pipe. So I've got to get a shorter belt for that and get the matching set here. So out of four belts, I think we got two right. <laughs> Let's try again. Well, go on. Get in there. You know where you want to go. Go on. Why are you staring at me? The throttle cable was a lot of fun to get to because I had to use one flat-headed screwdriver to get there and pry that harness plug out of the way because there's two bolts, one here and one here, Phillips head. So that was a lot of fun. But anyway, problem number one with the old one was, uh, was a different length and then the head was broke off. And so we had to change it out, but that's what it looks like. It's fastened. So we had to pry that harness out of the way to get to that one. There, these are the little screws down here, Phillips head. And we're going to have to fish this one back in there and get them screws back in. This is a newer 240 with this kind of intake on it. really doesn't matter. Just as long as it has this intake on it, it doesn't have to be turbo or NA. And that's what we had to get. Let's see. 30 millimeter socket. Extension. We're going to knock her down in there. So somebody was really thinking when they made this because all you have to do is loosen up this bolt right here, pivot this sideways, pull your belts. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to see us next week when we put gauges, the coolant system, and the exhaust system on this car. Keep your turbo world.